Welcome everyone to the SoCal Car Scene Podcast, the exclusive place for coverage of car culture in Southern California and the personalities that drive it. I'm your host, Dean Marash. Joining us today is Linda Vaughn, or as many of you know her, Miss Hertz. And I can't pronounce that very well, but it'll probably get better. Hurst. Thank you. Hurst. But before we get started, I need to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by our good friends at SeaTac and Wicked Automotive Detailing. And of course, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, The SoCal Car Scene, so you never miss an episode. Let me take a few minutes and introduce you to our incredibly special guest, Linda Vaughn. <laughs> Linda is an American motorsports racing personality who's been described as a preeminent beauty queen of stock car racing and the first lady of motorsports. Linda was named Miss Queen of Speed at Atlanta International Raceway at the tender age of 18 and has acquired many other titles since then, all of them good, by the way, all of them good, including Miss Hearst Golden Shifter. She was also chosen to be the queen of the 1961 Dixie 400. Oh my goodness. That's going back. <laughs> I'm still in school. <laughs> Miss Vaughn has been a notable ambassador and promoter of various forms of American motor racing for decades. In 1979, Linda was awarded the Specialty Equipment Marketing Market Association Person of the Year and was inducted into the SEMA Hall of Fame eight years later. Amazing. She appeared in the 1976 film The Gumball Rally and the 1983 film Stroker Ace. Had to bring my son up to speed on that one. Good. And she was just recently inducted into the Motorsports Hall of Fame in 2009. Amazing. Linda. Thanks so much for joining us on the SoCal Car Scene. Well, thank you very much. And I have to bring you an update. I was just put into the NASCAR Motorsports Hall of Fame. No kidding. And I've just got a new ring on and I'm so proud of it. Wow. Uh, and Judy went with me. So we really enjoyed our trip up with Jim Williams and that jet. It only took us 48 minutes to fly up there. And I think I cried and laughed all the way back. What a great night it was to oh, be put in the NASCAR Motorsports Hall of Fame West. Wow, congratulations. Thank you, thanks That's to you. some wonderful people that nominated wow. me, Ken Clapp uh, from NASCAR. Wow. So it was great. Well, I'm going to update my bio. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of things. I, get, yeah, there, I, I, I missed about I 100 things. I back to the Dixie thing. My word, I was still in my training bra. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a child. Just a child. <laughs> I took my mother with me to that race. Did you really? Yeah, because I was 17. <laughs> oh, my God. But, you know, it brings up the point, right? Did you ever imagine when you got started going to the racetracks, you're 17 or 18 or whenever all this started, and you're in your teenage years, and then, all you know, looking back, you're like, you got this incredible career and life. Yeah, 50 years later, and I'm still shifting gears. I never dreamed that it would last this long. I, uh, I thought, well, when I got my Hearst contract, it would last maybe a year or two yeah. the most. But he kept renewing my contract every three years, every three years. And finally, he made me a corporate employee. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a ham or a turkey every year. A turkey. <laughs> and I took the turkey. But it was just uh, snowballed into a great marketing uh, trip for me because I, I work at the races, you know, they go to the race on Sunday and sell on Monday. I do the warehouse shows and the industry was growing and we grew with it. So we wanted to make Hearst a household word. So that's what we did. Okay. STP, Richard Petty, Linda Vaughn and Hearst. That's how I looked at it. STP. Oh my God. I had, <laughs> I had their stickers everywhere. Oh, then we all, and, and we all, we all used it. it. Yeah, absolutely. When in doubt, dump some in your oil. You know, it always <laughs> fixed everything, I think. So how did you get your start? Do you recall the very first motorsport event or track you went to? And oh, what, yeah. how, what brought that all about? Don Gartless, the very first track I went to was down at Paradise in uh, right outside of Calhoun, Georgia, down the road from Dalton at Peace, and I was dating Jimmy Newberry, and we took our 57 Chevrolet down there, and uh, he was uh, uh, drank a little bit too much, so <laughs> I drove the car. So I would go in and buy him the beer because I didn't drink, and he'd let me drive the car. So I entered it in that race, and we won that night. No kidding. <laughs> and that started it all. And I, I met Gartless through uh, Pickle, because Pickle uh, worked on Big Daddy Don Gartless's engine in Dalton, Georgia. And Pickle's from Dalton, Georgia, and I grew up over there in that neighborhood. Right. So I'd hear this engine fire up, and I'd ride down there on my bicycle and check it out. And I absolutely fell madly in love with the top fuel dragster. As soon as I smelled that nitro methane, it made me <laughs> insane. <laughs> Is that what it does? Oh my you lord! Think I think it changes it. you chemically. Yeah, oh, and I'm telling you, it changes yeah. everything. <laughs> I absolutely fell in love with it, and I started going to the drag races, Jimmy and I. 
So then, how, how old were you at the time? 16, 17? I was 16, 17. Wow. Uh, actually, I met Don Garvey's when I was 15. 15 years old. But uh, wow. he thought I was older because I looked older. <laughs> <laughs> I'd come riding up on my bicycle every year. He'd be over there working on his car with pickles. Saying hi. And, and each year he'd take a different look at me. <laughs> and that particular last year, he dropped his ranch. <laughs> On purpose. Because I had grown up a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As wow. my grandma would say, I busted out all over. <laughs> <laughs> That's and funny. Your grandma was just hilarious. amazing because we had the 55, 56, and 57 car clubs. And, of course, they were all Chevys. Yeah. They were all Chevy yeah. boys. And when a, a Mopar guy would come in, they'd all they'd go drag racing. I'd go drag racing yeah. with them. And 99% of the time, we'd beat them. <laughs> of course, Mopar or no car. Well, that was kind of like it was back then, but yeah. uh, I respect my part. They got a couple of cars now I'd like to drive. Absolutely. I really, really do like they've stepped up their program, and That's, I really like that. Well, we saw that demon out that there demon, in our shop. Oh, I, well, I just came back from the NHRA drag races, and Leah, Leah drives one of those, and my goodness, that car flies. I'm very impressed with that Dodge stepping up to the plate. Yeah, they really I have. Wish, I wish everybody else would and take care of the American car, our love for the American cars and racing. And, yeah. And the street cut because you know look at the ladies that buy cars and they see it they see her and they're going to buy one of those cars so yeah. that's how i feel about american muscle yeah. it's still here it's in your blood and it, it needs is. to be supported right? it is so how does a uh, chevy mopar gal get connected with olds and become the hearse girl there what's the well, story on that one i mean i was uh, always kind of partial to gm products and uh, growing up with them uh, I entered every contest I could get in so I could get out of Dalton, Georgia and see the world. So I was at Daytona and I was Miss Firebird for the Pure Oil Company. And Wally Parks and George Hurst were talking and I met Mr. Hurst and Jack Duffy and, and they said, well, why don't you be in our contest? And I go, oh, what contest is that? And he goes, well, here's our full page ad in Hot Rod Magazine. It says, we're looking for a new Miss Hurst Golden Shifter. She must like cars and racing, be able to travel, have a good personality, and have sound teeth. <laughs> good teeth. <laughs> well, guess what? You had good teeth? I work for a dentist. <laughs> I'm a dental hygienist. I was working in the afternoon after school, and I went on and got my, my uh, training. And I said, well, are you looking for a race queen or a race horse? <laughs> so I entered the contest. Over 200 girls were in it. No kidding. I'll tell you, those girls from Charlotte, North Carolina were tough because... Uh, the owner of Charlotte Motor Speedway, Bruton Smith, brought a beautiful brunette down there with blue eyes. She looked like Elizabeth Taylor. But I got her beat. I I, uh, I won. And I was so proud. I was really, really, really proud to have won that. And I thought it was just going to be for a year, and it's going into almost 50 years. 50 years. <laughs> well, that's amazing because nobody, I don't, I don't think that story is well known, that it was that competitive. Oh, there was a lot of competition. Wow. It was a lot, especially in the bathing suit competition. Mm -hmm. But I learned from martial law how to walk with a book on my head <laughs> and stand up straight. And I'm a little top heavy, so I wanted to make sure <laughs> that I looked really good and knew how to stand properly in those high heel <laughs> shoes. So I practiced at her school. And she was a tremendous help to me. Oh, really? Because I don't think I would have won had it not been for martial wow. law training me and teaching me the things that she did. That's always and a protege or a mentor uh, it, type relationship to make this. She had a modeling school and yeah. uh, she, she, when she saw me in that white Catalina bathing suit, put some high heels on me and made me put that book on my head and walk back and forth to the studio. So I did. And then she made me do a little cup of tea and my, my uh, hot tea and sit down and drink it properly without spilling it. I did. I learned a lot from her. Wow. So when I got up and going and going to all these great dinners and things, I knew exactly what fork to use, how to sit and wow. drink tea. And I ended up going all over the world. Wow. So what an honor to have known her. Here I am. I had to ride the Greyhound bus down for $1.88 <laughs> from Dalton, Georgia to Atlanta to go to her modeling school. <laughs> okay, 88. That's not going to even get you a cup of coffee these but days. But you know what? I'd do it again if I had a chance. Yeah. Absolutely open the whole world to my eyes. Congratulations. And I love racing so much. I mean, I was just always into racing. You know, and so it, it kind of makes me think about this whole notion of women in cars, right? So now, what well, you know, here we are a few years later, right? <laughs> and we see women building cars. We see oh, women yeah. dr yes, racing we cars. Yes. We see women very actively involved in the car scene. We've got a lot of women owners here at SoCal Classic Car Storage. Um, and you saw a lot of them at the car show. We Beautiful see them at cars. all Beautiful the shows cars. we go to. And, 
they're building. So what's changed? I mean, well, I'd like to compliment you on how well you're taking care of all these classic oh, cars. I you. was very impressed. Judy and I both were back there so I was wanting to <laughs> check it out which cars we wanted. But uh, women love cars. They buy cars. And uh, they're so smart now. They're engineering. They, they got away from just... Uh, being a secretary, they got into the world of industry. Yeah. I mean, look at Judy Kane, how she's in, involved in this. Industry. She's incredible. Absolutely. I think she should be on the show with us well, because of what she's done with uh, PRI and SEMA and now her own e part trade. I'm real proud to be associated with her because she's taken it to another uh, avenue. I mean, she's yeah. up there working. And most of these women engineers have a chance now to show who they really are. Yeah. They don't have to, to uh, bow down Me. to any man. It's, right. it's what they know, it's what they do know, yeah. and what they can do. And just like Leah, she drives that top field dragster, and I was telling Tony Sunday up there, I said, well, how does it feel to have a girlfriend going faster than you? He goes, a fiance, we're going to have our own team soon. But he ran uh, seven rounds uh, and went over 313 miles an hour, so he's catching up with her. But you know what? It's wonderful to know he has just lifted his spirit. He acts like a teenager now. Yeah. They're just having the best time of yeah. their life. Yeah. And drag racing is where it's all at. Well, I tell you, these people work together with the factories, and they work together. Uh, they make safer car parts like when we built the Hearst yeah. automobiles. It was the drag racers that really came up with a lot of our, our yeah. uh, problem solved. Yeah, like John, our, John Force almost killed himself a couple times. And, you know, they probably made some additional safety changes after some of those explosions. Well, but he it came a long way later, but look at the people who yeah. have a flywheel fly apart yeah. and cut their foot half engine off, like a big daddy or the engine yeah. right in front of them. Right, that's and what I was thinking, engine in front. And tires and, yeah. and tire testing, and I think that we all worked in together. It makes the family race yeah. Yeah. and this industry what it is today, yeah. and it's future. Yeah. I think you're going to have a great future. If we get our country straightened out, we'll have a great future. <laughs> well, I don't think racing needs straightening out. Right I don't now. want to talk politics. Yeah, racing is in good muscle, shape. Muscle is back, so let's take care of it and protect it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that's what SEMA is all about, right? Uh, protecting oh, our, our hobby and our uh, insane, uh, unquenchable appetite for car, all things cars. You know, yeah, doesn't absolutely. matter what it is. But, but women, you're right. In general, I think there was... You know, they were sidelined because of the, you know. Because the, they were a good looking woman with a nice yeah, body. Well, yeah. they have a nice brain to go with it. Yeah, that's right. And I'd always say, my my knowledge is up here. It's not right here. <laughs> yeah. There's talk, a heart under that. Yeah, talk to the, talk to the face. <laughs> a lot of people couldn't tell me what color my eyes were until I covered everything up. And started talking. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great to see it. And we see it and we're excited about it, uh, that women are such an integral part of the car scene. And I think going forward it's going to be even more so well, congratulations you, you broke a lot of, you, you broke a lot of ground yourself well i think i have and i think uh i i had great uh, the lady that ran from Oldsmobile. i mean this poor lady had worked so hard at Oldsmobile, but never got the recognition that she deserved and when i took on Oldsmobile as a project what a great great opportunity yeah. Uh, to work with the people I got to work with. Yeah. I call them the great generals up there. And, and uh, then the Allisons, they were involved, and uh, the drag racers, they were involved, and Warren Johnson. But to get to work with this whole family behind the scenes for Detroit, we made Detroit look good. And they took care of us, and we became the official shifter in the Oldsmobiles and the Pontiac. Wow. And then George said, Ford, fix on race day. I go, no. It's first on race day right now, George. Give me the Ford account. I saw Ford. I said, we've got to take care of America and their future with this industry. So Hearst became and stayed very neutral. I could work with any company, any wow. of the big four at that time. No kidding. Because wow. I knew how to keep secrets. I knew how to work. I mean, we even, for the Dodge Boys, built a complete different driveline and shifter for them. Wow. The slapstick shifter. Yeah, loved it. So those are the things that behind the scenes I got to work on, which I loved. Well, it's good to know that you can keep secrets. We might have a few down here that we got to keep for you. But right now, what I got to do, <laughs> I got to run uh, and, and deliver an ad for one of our great sponsors. So let me take a minute and thank one of them. Uh, I bet many of you are looking for a smarter way to charge your car's batteries. Our friends at SeaTech lead the way in care and maintenance of vehicle batteries. SeaTech's unparalleled knowledge and continuous investment in innovation means they offer high quality, reliable chargers that are effective for your car's electric system. The quality of SeaTech's products 
make them the trusted company of the world's most recognizable car brands. Get yours today at SpartaCharger.com and type in the code SOCAL, all caps, at checkout and get a 10% discount on all CTEC products. I think it's time to show this off and you know, to talk of about this a little bit. The, here it is. <laughs> Linda Vaughn, the first lady of motorsports. Ford That's by Don all Barlow. motorsports. That's not just drag racing, stock yeah. car racing, Indy car racing, Formula One racing. So how did this racing. come about? They, uh, they came did... after me. Uh, car Tech and Wes wanted to do a book with me, and I kept putting them off, and I didn't want to do one because I just hadn't been really happy with some of them. They'd done a great shot. That's Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> That's taken out at Riverside Race. Is it really? Right here. If you'll see that cowboy hat I have on, I brought him one of those that day out at Riverside. He wanted one of Will Stetson, so I got it and I had Willie Nelson to sign the inside of it for him. Wow, what a beautiful but book. But having to, to uh, uh, go to Nashville a lot, I did some singing, so I got acquainted with Marty Robbins and I got acquainted with a few of the greats back there. So when we had the pace car programs, George Hurst let me hire the two pace car drivers. And in 72, I just finished the off-road race down in Mexico and got lost out there in the middle of nowhere <laughs> Why with not? James Garner. Oh, I hired how fun James is that? Garner. Oh, it was real getting fun. fun. <laughs> getting lost with him. Yeah. Getting lost with James Garner girls, let me tell you. Ooh, I'm telling you, <laughs> what a time. Uh, we uh, we got acquainted and we worked together with him and his mother's brothers. And, and he was going through some changes at the studio at that time, and they were fi fixing to cancel his program. And I said, you know, Jim, I got a deal for you. How would you like to drive the most spectacular pace car ever built and lead the lap of the most spectacular race of the world, the Indy 500? He goes, come up here, let's sit down and talk about that. I drove up and we sat down and I took the contracts with me. He signed it that night. Wow. We hired, I hired James Garner, Jack, George Hurst, and Jack Duffy were thrilled to death. I bet they were. And it also helped him because being the number one show, it didn't get canceled. <laughs> and being the number one, the best looking guy in the whole United States can drive a race car and a pace car and Oldsmobile Love, we put that baby together and we sold every one of those pace cars before the green flag <laughs> fell. They were already sold. I bet they were. And all the ladies, I've never seen so many women come to the to no the You know, it's so funny. Um, <laughs> James <laughs> Gardner, you know, we, we think of him as, you know, just that guy the that Rockford was, a, Files. yeah, the Rockford Files, yeah, but we don't, we, we don't think of him as a sex symbol, but, no, but he, he was, was, you know, in his, not in his only head. a sex symbol, the man backed it up. He was a hell of an off-road racer. Was he really? And a, and a road racer in Grand Prix. Let me tell you, Jim had a great talent. No we kidding. lost him last year yeah. and I'm so sad about that. And I stay in touch with his family, but he was such a, not recognized for when he'd use his common name, which was James Bumgardner, and he was from Oklahoma where my grandma was oh, from. Oklahoma, so wow. We just kind of felt like we're all family. Yeah. And he drove for the off-road race for Oldsmobile, and George Hurst, just, they just took a liking to him. And we built those pace cars, and we had the best time. Oh, and he told AJ, he goes, I'm going to drive you deep into turn one. And Mario <laughs> cracked up, and we laughed. But he did. He drove that pace car, and he did a great job. Did he really? Wow. Fabulous job. Came so, back and drove a couple more after that. Drove the Buick after that. And, uh, so you were friends with Don Garlitz, or Big Daddy, Big Daddy or what? Daddy, I grew up. You grew up with him, yeah. so probably easy to get him to do the forward for you. I yeah, bet he well, was. I, I bet he was honored to do that. I, he was, and he was so precious, and and I was very honored to have done because they kept asking him, "Who do you want to get? Who do you want to get?" I said, "I want to get Big Daddy." I said, "We grew up together." Yeah. I mean, what's more fun than a little girl riding a bicycle up, seeing a ten thousand horsepower engine that's slipping off and going to the drag races, and getting to see it run? Woo. Yeah. <laughs> if I had it to do over, like I told you, I'd do it again. And my grandma, my grandma was a little bit involved with my grandpa, who was the sheriff, and they were bootleggers, and that was the way of the time. Yeah. And he, she told me, you tell that Don Garlis not to crank that engine up until these trains run by here. Here's the train schedule, so take it to him. So I took the schedule down. And gave it to <laughs> you him. did. I said, Grandma said you can't crank that engine up except when these trains run by because it draws too much attention. <laughs> She's got bootleg down there under the floor. <laughs> That's and that's a, a true, true you were, story. You were a good granddaughter. You did <laughs> oh, exactly what she told I did you to exactly. do. Exactly. <laughs> Funny. 
So what about other race car drivers? Are there some other oh, notable I race car drivers that were an integral part of your life? I mean, oh, I absolutely. See. Fireball Roberts, when I was Miss Firebird, Fireball got me, he, he said, John, be in that Miss Hearst contest. He was very uh, oh. helpful to me and taught me a lot. And, and uh, of course, uh, getting to know Ray Nichols and the Pontiacs, and I was Miss Pontiac in 62, so I got to hang out with the Pontiac guys. And see, I'm, I'm not neutral, because I can kind really of work are, with everybody. And then my roommate <clears throat> ended up uh, being John Holman's secretary to Holman and Moody, so I got to hang out with all the wow. Ford people. Wow. So the engineering fascinated me. I really, really, really was wow. taken by it. getting to go to the tire test for Goodyear. Yeah. In Firestone, but I did a lot of Goodyear tests, and I still today work with Goodyear. Do you really? All my cars have Goodyears on them. Wow! And they still work with me, and uh, it's just—it's been a whole family affair working with everybody. Wow! Congratulations! But I did hang out in Nashville for a while, and Dolly and I know each other. Well, I was going to bring that up, but I'm the, sure I'm not the first the person same, to notice a well, similarity. We, we drank from the same well. But, but. <laughs> no, I just mean uh, personality-wise, you, yes. you're bubbly, you're yeah. effervescent. Yeah, but she's you got she's, a magnetic personality. Thank, thank you, know? you very much. She's uh, very much. Uh, uh, a great lady, and I'm so proud to know her and work with her. We had the same agent who uh, had us in singing one day, and she could sing to anything. I'm telling you, that woman was the best singer and still is today. I'm just so impressed. And she never but ages. Fred, I, no, I don't know what's going on there. She has the money to take care of herself. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I wouldn't have these little spots on me if I had her money. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Fred Foster, God bless his soul, Fred Foster said to me, Linda, I think I'm going to send you home. He put me back on that Greyhound bus and sent me home and asked me not to be mad at him, but I wasn't old enough to be in that town just yet. <laughs> and I didn't see him for about 20 years. And the next time I saw Fred Foster, I walked out on stage with Paul Newman and I said, Fred, how did I do? How do you like me now? <laughs> how do you like me now? That's a <laughs> great question. Because we were there for a race and Paul and I drove in a celebrity race for diabetes because we both had diabetes in Nashville and Fred Foster was there. So I got a standing ovation that night. Of course, I had blue eyes with me. <laughs> he was a great man, Paul. Paul was a good driver. Was he? Paul was a heck of a race yeah. driver. Yeah. I, I, a good friend of mine um, that uh, was kind of actively involved when I started this business, celebrity, and uh, they invited him to the Toyota Grand Prix celebrity race. So um, they, he missed the practice session. And he says, don't worry about it. And they're like, no, you need to practice. But we're not going to let you drive. But anyway, he talked him into. Can I ask who is it? John. John Capilano. Oh, it's a John. Okay. So they, uh, <laughs> I was they, somehow he talked him into letting him drive. Yeah. He said he crashed their car like three times and he destroyed the car. And they were so pissed off. <laughs> and it, it's well, so they funny. They got plenty more. <laughs> yeah, they got plenty of more. But it's so funny. Everybody thinks you could just jump in one of these cars. Yeah. It ain't that easy. No, you can't. I'll tell you who impressed the hell out of me when he drove in the celebrity race a few years after that one was Joe Amato gets out Joe of the Amato. top two dragster, comes out there and wins the Long Beach Grand Prix celebrity race. He kicked butt and took names. What was I that, was Toyota Celica or something yeah, at the yeah, time? Yeah. I remember they ran yeah, the Toyota yeah, Celica. Yeah, yeah. Brown GT. ran that whole series, and it was a very well-run yeah. series. Yeah. I, I'm not into Toyota, but I respect them and what they've done. And... Uh, I enjoyed that series. I enjoyed it a lot. I didn't know That's what the right. hell else to do when I got to SoCal, so I volunteered for that race every year, Toyota Long Beach Grand Prix, and I got a chance to be a course worker, and and it was just a thrill of my life I've to be been that to close. Every one of them. Did you feel really? Yeah. Wow. Incredible. Still what do. A, I love that race. Judy and I are going next week. All right, next week. That's right, right around the corner. So much that you've been recognized for. You've had so many titles. You've mentioned five or six, right? <laughs> Uh, is it one of those titles like Miss Hearst, or is it one of the, the recognition that you're now getting for a, a lifetime of accomplishment and making a difference? Or the greatest, is it the whole thing? The I greatest mean, title in the world is becoming Miss Hearst Golden Chapter. Okay. And when my mother and uh, James Carter drove me around the Indy 500, <laughs> I cry even talking about it wow. today. So they were both in the car? Of course they were. My mother was riding shotgun. Are you kidding? She's mad in love with James Carter. Oh, she, was... she said, go faster. I said, no, don't blow me off the back end wow. of this car. Uh, <clears throat> that was like being at every race I'd ever been to all at one time. Because everybody said, Linda, go around the track. <laughs> wow. Look at me. That's no, that's okay. Me. What an emotional day that was. But um, to be honored the way now that your peers are recognizing is for the hard work. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So, I'm very, very proud to work with all the ladies in the industry, and because uh, I'm a lady myself. <laughs> Jason and I, Jay and I, were going through IMDb with Burt Reynolds because we, you know, wanted to talk about the movie you're in, and uh, what an but it makes me when you look at his body of work, it makes me think of your body of work. It's just incredible. We're back into the 50s, 60s, 70s. That's what we meant. There's a hundred and something movies that this guy was in, and. You know, it's easy to dismiss him as a non-serious actor, but when you look at the body of work, yeah. that's uh, quite an accomplishment. It makes me think about you, what well, you've accomplished. You. That's it's incredible. I'm saying that because uh, Bert was one of my dearest friends, and uh, we did um, uh, Barrett Jackson together, and uh, they said, of course, we had the two Pontiacs up there, and they said, well, Bert, did you ever take that damn cowboy hat off? And he looked and smiled that little grin of his. He goes, I will for Linda Vaughn. He said that. <laughs> the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Wow. But we never had a thing going. We were just great friends. Oh. You know, he loved football, and I liked oh, to go to football yeah. games. And, and we met. We were young when we met, but we stayed friends all those oh, that's years. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well. We'll talk about him in a little bit. We've got to talk about your acting career. <laughs> that was. I act every day, honey. Oh, okay, all right. So uh, let me give another shout out to one of our other sponsors, Wicked Mobile Auto Detailing. Um, Wicked is a luxury mobile auto detailing, paint restoration, and paint protection business right here in Southern California. They specialize in high end paint correction, self healing ceramic, and graphene coatings, clear bra, and many other services. Check out their YouTube channel, Wicked Auto Detailing, and see their professionalism and unbeatable customer service, which you can always expect from a Wicked Detail. Contact them at 617-901-1417 and give your car the devilish good looks it deserves. I love that that advertisement that you fun? just did because I got the song to back it up by Chris Isaac and his oh, Wicked Wicked Ways. Oh, I love Chris that Chris is a dear friend of mine. That's a very emotional yeah, song. Yeah, we, very emotional Every time song. I hear it, I'm like, what, what's going on yeah. when he wrote this thing? You, yeah. it's Dick, just, uh, uh, Chris and I did a couple of promotions together yeah. for um, the Unser family because Jody's in a wheelchair and yeah. she never did recover from whatever she got. It paralyzed her. So we did some benefits, and Chris and I worked together. No and, and he came to Indy, and I took care of him. And I did get a little involved with him. We, we spent some time together, and, and yet he uh, he said that he wanted to get a Hearst shifter anyway. And I got him a Hearst shifter, but we got to talk in cars and music and stuff, and we became pretty good friends. Oh, that's yeah. great. What a that's great, great. What a great guy. Well, just another part of your charm life, it seems like, <laughs> you know, at some point, if you look back and you listen to other people, and you're like, wow, pinch me. This is incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. So uh, we meant we were threatening to talk about Hollywood. I guess we might as well do it, right? So yeah. you're in a couple of pretty awesome car movies. Yeah. I mean, right? I, the Gumball Rally was one that was, I think everybody saw that. And oh, it was so we much all were, We were all like, what the hell? They race across the country. They go 100 miles an hour. I mean, I when that thing came out, I was, you know, Well, Michael know, Saracen had never driven a Cobra in his life. And Raul Julian had never even sat in a Ferrari, so I was out in the parking lot teaching them both how to drive because really? they were going to ruin those cars. If <laughs> I had them. They had me a nervous wreck, so we all stayed on the Queen Mary, so we got well acquainted working that movie. <laughs> Raul Julian, wow. Uh, yeah, Raul Julian was so sweet to me. And a couple of lines, of course, my plot part must have got cut out. I mean, we worked for weeks, but I just had a little bit of part in there, but it was fun. But uh, I see that every once in a while somebody will bring me a picture up to sign. <laughs> but he, I'm was, sure they will. he was a great guy. And uh, the old gentleman at Von Taylor, I played cards with them. So we'd have poker games after we'd get through shooting. And we got it well acquainted and talked cars. And I had my little Dino Ferrari with me. Okay. So they kept saying, let's put it in the movie. I go, no, let's not. Because <laughs> I don't want anybody driving that little Dino but me. <laughs> no, I don't blame it. Yeah, those things are really yeah, nice. Do you yeah. still have that Dino? I do, I do. Yeah. What That's color? Is it? Red, of course. Red. Okay. Red. I've seen one in yellow and red. Two forty six GT at Chairs and Flares. Yeah, you know, yeah. Beautiful. She's the real thing. Wow, love that. <laughs> but those I cars. don't talk about that too much because I got all my muscle cars. It sleeps uh, with the Hearst Oldsmobile. Wow. Cross, they're, they're, are they cross babies, pollinating? But I was hoping they would. <laughs> <laughs> Make some amazing looking babies. Oh boy. <laughs> So we talked about Burt Reynolds a little bit, and you did that movie, uh, Stroker, uh, 
Stroke Race. Uh-huh. Stroke yeah. Race. My friend wrote that. There was a, there's an incredible amount of uh, very famous actors and actresses in that movie. Yeah. I, well, I was, again, I was looking at the IMDb going, oh my God, look at these people. <laughs> You know, what the hell? <laughs> we all so, had a good time. That must have been fun. It was so much fun because after we get to shooting, we'd do the dailies and we'd all get in there. Of course, they drank a lot and I didn't drink. Yeah. I still don't drink much. I'm not a drinker. And, and I had so much fun with those guys and then we'd play poker and I'd win. <laughs> but it was, you were the only sober it was really fun yeah. uh, making the films. It really was. I enjoyed it. But to be a Hollywood cat, I'm not. I like the real thing. Okay. I've turned down lots and lots Have and you? lots and lots of parts that yeah. I will play because that's not my cup of tea. But uh, when they're serious with me like they were in those two movies, I enjoy doing it. Good for you. Yeah. Well, it must have been a great I, And I, w- I would say to Gene Hackman again, I said, when are you going to do AJ's movie? Because Gene could really do a good AJ. Oh, really? He really could. And then I talked to Pacino about doing Mario's movie. So, because I want to be in both of them. <laughs> well, hopefully, he's still with us when they get around oh, it. Yeah. I don't know what the holdup is. Yeah. I guess you have to wait for these. Well, somebody said something. I won't tell you who said it. Said, well, he has to be dead before doing. Movie. <laughs> That's and what so I was asking. I tried and I walked out and I said, I hope you never do that movie. Yeah, forget. And it. I never brought it up again. Sorry, I said yeah, that. Yeah, I was. I was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Excuse me. But there were a lot of great race car drivers in that Stroke Race movie, right? Oh, my goodness. I mean, they hired a bunch of NASCAR guys. We had and... Tim Richmond, and he kept trying to get in my dressing room. I swear those <laughs> boys. <laughs> no kidding. I cleaned that up. Yeah, it was really fun. It was a fun time. They had a lot of really good drivers. Too. Yeah. They really did. Now, were those drivers to uh, simulate races, or were they teaching uh, yeah. actors how to drive cars? Or they, they were consultants? doing a little of all, okay. all of that okay. and the above. And they especially had to teach their, drive, their actors how to drive. Yeah. My God, they wrecked enough cars. Yeah. But I tell you who did a great job in, in uh, that NASCAR film that they did was uh, Paul Newman's little friend. I can't even think straight right now. Tom Cruise, Tom. Days of Thunder. <laughs> Days of Thunder. My son and I, Jay, were talking the other day. We were thinking that movie is almost one of the best non-CG, realistic race realistic, car movies. Yeah. And you know the protagonist and just the whole setup on that movie just works. It's it, fun to still go watch that it, movie. Were you involved in that? So fun. Well, we had our product display and of course a lot of her shifters and all those cars. Yeah. But I didn't have a role in it, which I was a little disappointed. But that's okay. I was there. But uh, Paul introduced me to Tom Cruise, and we hit it off. So it was great this past year when he drove up and, the, and he gets out, and Daryl Quinn and I on the start line. And he goes, Hey, Linda and Daryl. And this, some guy said, Wow, you know Tom Cruise? I said, He knows us. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sweetheart. Is what he a, really? What oh, a fine wow. young man and a good little driver. Does all his own stuff. I know, I heard that. Especially and motorcycles, cars. Just, he insists, right? Just, he insists on it. And, he really wanted to do that movie well, and he worked extra hard. And we're all staying at the same hotel, and somebody robbed his room and stole his sweater. Well, I found out who stole that sweater, and we got it back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, that never happened again to him, because he was so sweet. and He was heartbroken, because his mother had bought him that sweater. And I kind of figured out which girl was the one in that room. So we got it back for him. But uh, that was just an ace in my hat because he was so sweet to me. So he but was I nice to bad. you. He was nice to you during that movie. But you know that's when he fell in love with Nicole Kidman, right? Because no, she no, was, no, wasn't no, she no, wasn't no, she no, his no, doctor no, in that no, movie? No, 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 no. He didn't fall in love with her then. Oh, okay. It was later. Oh, yeah. later. But okay. they kind of checked each other out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was checking out Nicole Kidman. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he's always been a sweetheart. Yeah, wow, it's but, great to know. Uh, happy happy uh, days. Those were happy days because he really appreciated the true stories behind Stroke and, and, and behind the stock car scene. And and um, uh, what was the gentleman's name that he was portraying his cars? Oh, uh, Tom uh, Jim Richmond drove for him. Um, wasn't wasn't rowdy. No, I don't come to me again. I'm just like I say, I get hungry. I'm a diabetic, so I get a little spacey yeah, here. Yeah. I guess y'all can copy Dick a Trickle? spacey blow. Was it Dick no, Trickle? No, Dick was in it. Dick was in but, it. But uh, the point I was trying to make, you'll come to me probably at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, like all of my good ideas. But he wanted to really portray the, the, the Haas, the people, as to who they really were. Yeah. And he did a lot of studying, a lot of homework. He spent a lot of time talking to yeah. me. Wow. And another one of my heroes, of course, is uh, Junior Johnson. Yeah. My daddy and, and Junior were 
bootleg buddies. No kidding. <laughs> and my uncle. They drive around in 40 Fords. 40 Fords. Yeah, yeah, my daddy had 40 Fords. And I remember riding on the side of the 40 no. Fords. I'd hop up on the, the uh, running board you and did ride not. down the dirt road. Yes, I did. I got a picture <laughs> of me riding on that car. <laughs> So why were those cars so good at bootlegging? Did they know how to modify them? Was oh, it the, yeah. well, was it know, because it had one of the first Scott V8s? Wendell built a lot of the engines. Who a did? lot of people didn't realize the black driver, Mr. Wendell Scott, built a lot of those engines. Right? Oh, yes, sir. So they were hot rodded. And they, they were, were hot rodded, and Wendell built Daddy one, and he built Junior Johnson a couple. Yeah, see, I was I was just a little young and then running around tonight as a kid, but God Almighty, did I like it. I liked what I saw. I grew up with it. So don't you find a little bit of irony to this? You grew up in a, a bootlegging environment as a young young yeah. lady, and you never, booze never appealed to you, so. Not at all. That's interesting. Not at all. Mm -hmm. That stuff you could really talk to a dragster on. <laughs> That's better than <laughs> a race cap. You get by a tick and pour some white lightning on it, and it wouldn't hurt you. <laughs> Wow, what an amazing... My grandma used to use it for medicinal purposes <laughs> when my tonsils were all bad. She'd say, if you drink this, and she put something with this brown sugar and white lightning and made me drink it. Oh, Lord, <laughs> it'd cure anything you had. <laughs> Snake bites. So, no, I've never enjoyed the drinking thing. No, good for you. So uh, you got inducted into the Motorsports Hall of Fame, right? Oh. Yes. And tell us about that. Did you get emotional there? Were you able to? Keep, I tried not. Were you to. able to keep it together? I mean, uh, I think it did pretty well. It's kind of like the Hall of Fame of it was cars. huge. It was the biggest thing that's ever happened. It's like going to the Academy Awards. Right. It was the who's who of the motorsports world was there, and to be put on in the middle of these two famous drivers that I love dearly. On my right was Tony Stewart, and on my left was Dario Franchini, and to keep such beautiful. Company. That oh ain't my bad. Goodness. What a what a wonderful evening it was, and my family was there, Gerald and my sisters and my dear friends Judy and Nancy George and Cleo Shelby, Shelby's wife, and I, I invited them all, and they all came for me, and it was wow. just a beautiful family reunion for me. We had a great time. Wow! Congrats. Somebody drank a lot of champagne that night and charged to me. <laughs> were you able to get Were you able to get through your pre prepared remarks, or did you just say the hell with it? I'm going to get no, up there now and no. let it cut it short. No, I just uh, I just uh, thank the people that helped me get to where I was, and I thank Mr. Ron Watson. I called him the Cecil B. Yeah. DeMille yeah. of the Motorsports Hall of Fame. We lost him right after that, wow. so that was his last Hall of Fame. So it was very special to me, but getting to be put into the largest and the most wonderful Hall of Fame is the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America. Wow. And uh, Congratulations. I wish my mama had been there, but she was there in spirit. Yeah, and, uh, cheering you on. So my sisters and, and uh, the drivers, and they were wonderful. It's uh, probably the, the highlight of my whole life, really and truly. My, my Cleo Shelby story is brief. Uh, <laughs> so I get a call one day. And she called me on the way over here. Did she go? <laughs> yeah. So she called me one day, and I I had no hello, idea. Hello, darling. Was, yes, hello, darling. I'm looking for a place to sell my car. The, the, the bloody thing's getting kicked out of the museum. Do you believe it? Anyway, I can't do a good British accent. But she proceeds to tell me that she's got a car at the Peterson, and they were kicking it out. And she's looking for a place was to store. Was that the Rolls? Yeah. yeah. And anyway, yeah. she talked for a half hour, 45 minutes, and I just found it so engaging. I had oh, no idea who she fabulous. was. Fabulous. Then she finally told me who she was. And then I called her a couple weeks later to see if she still needed to help. And no, but we had another fabulous conversation. And I thought, I said, you know, we've got to get you on this podcast. And well, she good. said she would be willing to do it. So I, I'll have to give well, her a call I'll, back. I'll, I'll would you put her, a good word I'll in for it? I'll put a good word in. Okay. I'll tell her she can come stay with me. I'll drive her over here. That'd be yeah. great. She loves to come to my house. She says, I love coming here, darling. The food's delicious, and I feel so comfortable in <laughs> She's got. The, doesn't she have the greatest <laughs> and stories, she says, though? I love your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby and I and her spent a lot of time together. Oh, my God. Yeah, we built Did a lot of, lot of her shifters for his boards, wow. you know, for yeah. his. And they drove the pace cars and stuff that we did together, yeah. All right, All well, those. thank you for the shout out. Yeah, man. I sure will. So what, what's new and exciting lately? Are, is there something that you can share with the rest of the class that you're working on, or is it top secret? Do you just have something, you know, kind of that you're... Well, I'm still single. That's pretty top secret. <laughs> um, not anymore. It's your, not he secret. your health is your most important virtue. And I, yeah. Yeah, I'm having a few little problems. Uh, it's the process of elimination. I'm trying to get feeling better, 
but I get mad when I can't walk up the steps at the tower at the drag races yeah. last week. Yeah. But uh, I'm getting better, but I had some heart issues, and I've got 14 stents. And I told AJ and Tony Stewart, I both got your numbers. I said, I've got 14 stents now. <laughs> heart number 14. That's hilarious. They used to be part of my yeah. combination to get in yeah. my house, but I changed that. Yeah. <laughs> When I got broken into by so, somebody. So sometimes you have to focus on yourself. Sometimes even though, I have to focus on myself, and yeah. I've been trying to do that here Good for you. to get to feeling better. And uh, But I'm not through yet. So a lot of people still want to see me, and I can still do these events and shows. I'm sure they do. I'm going to do it, and I'd love to do more talk shows and uh, TV shows. I would love to have my own podcast show, baby. I think that would be great. <laughs> I think we could yeah, work something out. Because down. you could probably pick up the phone and get any of these well, people think, that you've mentioned on I, the on I, the phone. I think that we could minute. just have the greatest time. I've always well, wanted to do that. Let's get them all to SEMA, and yeah. we'll, bl well, let's see we'll blow it up. Do. We'll see what we can yeah. do over there. SEMA would be yeah. a great place to... Well, everybody comes to that. That's so true. So hopefully we can, if we have a SEMA. So God bless us all. I hope we get to... I'm knocking on what it better happen. Prayers, prayers, prayers. When we did a podcast last year, Jay and I were going back and forth and arguing about whether or not there was going to be a SEMA. And I'm but, like, yeah, there's going to be one... And, and Jay was right. He said, nope, I think it's going to be canceled. They're just stringing us out. And sure enough, sure they canceled. Enough. I couldn't believe they canceled. Well, that was the strangest year of my life. But I'll tell you all something, and especially you dog owners out there, I have never had a dog in my life. And this little boy kept me the greatest company. I'm madly in love with a chocolate brown cocker spaniel named Curly Joe Cocker. So we bought him. I met him. him. Now I know you did. I know now how people love their animals, though, because see, I don't have any children, yeah. and being all alone during all this, uh, and and he was just the greatest. Yeah. And he and I both gained too much weight. Our heart doctors told us we both had to go on a diet. <laughs> the COVID, the COVID ten, they the call COVID. it. Even even Curly had yeah, the COVID yeah. ten. No, he's he's very nice. Isn't he a cool dude? Yeah, yeah. he well, loves they, cars. I noticed at that car show they came to see you, but there was a lot of love oh, for your dog. Oh, a lot of love created for Curly Joe. Yeah, a lot of love. Yeah, I think that's why Cleo Shelby comes to see him, to see <laughs> Curly Joe Parker. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about cars. You said I think you oh. said you got a Dino. We don't want to talk too much about that no, because no, I, I don't really we might offend the it. sensibilities of well, some of these I, American enthusiasts. I don't, I don't enthusiasts. want people to know I even have that. Let's change the Okay, that didn't happen. I've got but a you've big got a you've got an Olds in there. First Olds that sleeps with it. I got the '75 with the T tops and. George Hurst, that was the last car that he presented to me before the he passed away. 75. So she's definitely very special. It's yeah. got the 455 cubic inch. That thing is a big baby. I'm telling you, I love it. It's amazing that the they sound. were still stuffing a 455 in a car in 75. I can't believe how big that engine is. And you know, we used to build all the pace cars for Mr. France, and those Pontiac Canos mobiles had 455 engines in it. You know, another thing I want you folks to know, I was watching uh, the fire TV show last night. Do you know how many Hearst Rescue Tools that are in the state of California and every fire department and every highway patrolman? George Hearst was a great, great inventor. Wow. He invented the jaws of life. And I was, I've seen it wow. on a TV series yesterday a dozen times. I wrote down every episode I saw it in. And that's the Hearst Rescue Tool. We first invented it to have it in Indianapolis had a race, had a so track. we could get the boys out of the car because of fire. Yeah. And we had the uh, hydraulic arms on it. We could reach in and grab a driver out before he burnt to death, before we lost somebody. So George Hurst was very instrumental in saving what a lot of a, what lives. What a brilliant guy. And what a wonderful man to work for. Wow. I always call him Uncle George because he was more like a father to me, he yeah. and Jack Duffy. Because my daddy never partook in any of this in my whole career. He never went to a race, but my mama did. She was the racer in the family. She was, wow. But George Hurst was... Uh, the greatest man on earth, and, and I'm so proud to represent his company. Well, you feel free to bring those that olds or either one of those 455s down here anytime. I'd love to. You, you I would know. like to bring her over here. She needs to be out there flirting with all those yeah. cars. <laughs> there, you know what? Um, a lot of people call up and they say, "Hey, you know, um, I'm bringing this car. Do you, do you think it'd be a good place for us?" She'll have lots of company. Uh huh. Because of she, yeah. Yeah, like there's Mustangs and there's Corvettes and there's old. No, boy, there's some, there's some nice cars back there, folks. Let me tell you, oh, I, thank you. I saw that little red pickup truck and I was glued to it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that we'll we'll good call the Georgia. owner and see if that it's would available. That was good in Georgia, I'm it telling you. It looked really good. Yeah, so. Um, I'd like I, to have a truck. 
You've got another car that's being worked on. Um, Mr. Phelps is working on a car. Oh, for my you. heart, Rod Lincoln. Yeah, yeah let's Ron talk about Phelps. that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, Shelby, God bless his soul. We started building that, and I had to have it ready for the 97 Seaman Show. And the parts and pieces that were shipped down to El Segundo got stolen. Somebody was stealing my stuff that was coming in from the Ford Motor Company. It's the only Ford I've ever had in my possession and I wanted it to be a hot rod that people could afford. So uh, even Boyd had a comment to me, why didn't he come to me to build that? And I said, because I want to build an affordable hot rod. And I ended up naming it a sports rod. It's a half sports car and a half hot rod that's affordable that you could drop the engine in. And I put it in the back and Edsel's got me the engine and someone stole it. So I know who ended up stealing our parts. How is it you know all the thieves in your life? It seems well, like you know how to track people down. Unfortunately, they sure do take advantage of a woman's uh, <laughs> honesty, but that's okay. I'm gonna tell you what we took advantage of. So we're halfway through the car and I told Shelby, I said, man, somebody keeps stealing stuff. So Shelby said, we're going down there at three o'clock in the morning, Dan Lander. And Is that how he talks? We're going to get that car and we'll finish it up at the shop. So at three o'clock in the morning, we stole our own car and took it up to Shelby's <laughs> shop. Got it finished and headed to Seymour show. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. So that's the hot rod Lincoln. We pulled it out. We're going through it. And it needs a lot of attention. And uh, Ron Phelps and the guys are working on it. Mark Sanchez that did the wiring on it. And it's out in the desert, and Gene Winfield built the, uh, I got those off the Mercury, those headlights, you know, I know yeah. Mercury's. And I got the headlights off of Mercury, so we're just, uh, we're going to redo it Good. and get it all ready. You know, Can't wait. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Probably take another year. I, I told him I gave birth to that little hot rod Lincoln. <laughs> they set my facelift, my tummy tuck, and my swimming pool. <laughs> That's how much it cost. Yeah. So much for taking care of yourself. You're busy taking I'm care of your Lincoln. I'm taking care of a car. <laughs> well, that's that's the sacrifice you have to make as oh, a I car know. gal, yeah. a car guy. Uh -huh. Cars first, then loved ones second, you know, except yeah. for your dog. I'm sorry. Well, I got a Chevy that I like, too. I got that SS I'm driving out there. Beautiful car. Yeah, thanks to Mr. Jim Campbell and, and the, uh, Chip Canassi and, and my Chevy boys. And the new set of good years on it because, boy, <laughs> I went through some good, good tires. But that's got the old three quarter engine really, in it. Wow. I smoked the tires a little bit. I don't smoke cigarettes, but I do smoke my tires. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to teach me how to do that, Linda. You know, I'm around a bunch of guys that know how to get it done. You, you know, they've made a few marks on the streets nearby here, and they're experts at it. But I gotta be honest. You know, I have no clue how to do a nice smoky burnout without killing myself. Well, you so have there's to a you know you got to on a straight thing. street. Okay, yeah, you straight practice. street. And make okay. sure it's not wet. <laughs> Okay. You don't want to get a wet spot. But I know if you burn out. I know if you do it on a Mustang, you'll be sure to wind up in a pole, uh, yeah, in another yeah, car, or I a tree. I actually had the Mustang pace car in Indy one year, yeah. and I hit an ice streak and I flipped it. Oh, and no. oh Lord, thank God it was well built with that road cage in it, because I mean I annihilated that little baby, but I got out of it fine. And Edsel Ford, Edsel, it, we still talk today, and uh, Edsel says I, I hear that. Uh, on PCH, you got hit in one of your Cadillacs. I said, yeah, I did, Edsel. I said, that Mustang hit me, but uh, I lived through it. And he, <laughs> says, he goes, I just want to let you know that uh, if you need something, we'll take care of it. And I said, well, I need a new CTSV Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> Done? <laughs> that was teased him. Oh, because okay. thank God I was in that Cadillac when yeah. he hit me or he killed me. Because, you know, I've been to those That's crush scary. tests and, and, and going to the proving grounds. I learned a lot. I really I have you. learned a lot. Yeah. So I don't think it's like good music. I don't think there's an age limit to loving your no. cars no, and absolutely. good music and people. Well, you, like you and said, I, you got to have your health. And once you have yeah. your health, That's you can keep enjoying it. Thing, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But I do want to meet somebody handsome and nice. <laughs> okay. All right. You guys got the, the words out. Well, Linda, um, I think we'll wrap it there. We're gonna. It's a. Uh, it's been an incredible ride, and we can't thank you enough for hanging out with us here on the SoCal Car Scene. And I'd like to thank all of your folks out there that have her shifters to take care of them because they're quality. Yeah, but your your career, your life is expansive and fun and exciting, and <laughs> ain't we're, through yet. <laughs> yeah, and you ain't through yet. So what an incredible life! But let me wrap it up. I just thank people for watching us today and. Don't forget, all of these episodes are on our YouTube channel, the SoCal, the SoCal Car Scene, all separate words, where you can see awesome videos of our guests. Not all of them are going to be as exciting and fun as Linda, but <laughs> we're going to try. 
Uh, but please watch, follow, and most importantly, subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you prefer to listen to the show, please go to all your favorite podcast platforms like Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, Buzzsprout, Google Play, and the SoCal Car Storage forward slash SoCal Car Scene page. Thanks so much for listening and watching.